These are the two patients that, uh, it happens a lot to kids, right? You have to know the anatomy real quick. So when we talk about the glomeruli, we're talking about the bundle. This is a nephron. And so our kidneys have a million of those nephrons per kidney, right? And they're microscopic and they're very tiny and then they work their way like that. And the whole purpose is for them to receive blood right here at the glomeruli. And you have an afferent arterial that brings the systemic blood into the glomeruli. Now, right here you have a membrane that produces something that does something called semi-permeability, which means it allows to squeeze out substances from the blood that we don't need. And eventually, all that stuff goes this way, and it goes through the ureter, you know, pelvis ureter, into the urine. So this is, what's the nef this is what the nephron is doing, right? These two conditions affect the entire nephron, or mostly the glomeruli. This glomeruli should allow only certain substances to pass on through. We call that semi-permeability, okay? The only certain substances pass on through. One of the major things that are not supposed to pass on through that I'm going to discuss right now for these two conditions are protein. Okay? And so your protein should not be leaving your body because your proteins dictate fluid, um, fluid uh, distribution throughout the body. In nephronic syndrome, the main issue is your physiology changes. You know, I was telling you guys that in the glomeruli, semi-permeability, only certain substances are supposed to pass on through, but proteins were supposed to keep them in our blood. In nephrotic syndrome, you have something that precedes this condition, like an immunological response, usually a viral infection or something, that your immune system has to tackle, and then for some reason, your kidneys forget how to filter out the elements, and they start developing proteinuria, which means they lose their proteins. But I want you to understand that in this condition, the changes are physiological. It's like the, I want you to think of it as the kidney just forgot what it's supposed to keep, what it's supposed to lose. But it's only losing your protein, so you have proteinuria. Does that make sense? So nephrotic syndrome, physiology. Glomerular nephrotic is a little bit different. This is caused by a bacterial infection and an antibody response. Let me explain. This one right here happens to kids that have an upper respiratory infection, like uh, caused by strep, like streptococcus, a strep throat, right? Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening is kids sometimes don't take the full course of antibiotics or the antibodies that we, our body produces to fight off that bacteria, it for some reason begins to attack the glomeruli. In either case, either the strep or the um, antibodies are destroying the glomeruli. So I want you guys to associate that with a more serious condition. And we call that glomerulonephritis. Notice it's got the itis in it, this inflammation. It's destroying the glomeruli. And we're also having proteinuria, but the problem is that the kidney is not very much damaged. This can kill you if, it's, if you're not careful. It can progress to kidney failure eventually. So what happens is there's destruction of the glomeruli. You're losing the proteins, but you can't excrete the waste. So again, for glomerulonephritis, you lose the proteins, but you're also supposed to get rid of the waste, your urea, your nitrogen. But in glomerulonephritis, because of the damage that's occurring, it can't keep, it, it can't get rid of urea and nitrogen, the metabolic waste of protein, and it's losing its proteins as well, okay? So again, your BUN, blood urea and nitrogen for this patient, will go up. For this one, not so much, unless you incur some additional damage afterwards. So what you guys have to know about these two conditions is the diet. Oh, before that, these two conditions, when you're losing proteins, your body develops anasarco, which is generalized edema. These patients will have like puffy face, edema in their arms. They may even have like pulmonary edema. My point is that their fluid distributes everywhere in the body. That's generalized edema, as opposed to just dependent where it goes to the ankles, okay? So both of these patients have that, so the kids usually have to stay on bed rest, and that's what I was talking about earlier. Okay, this is one of the few conditions where patients are gonna have to be on bed rest. And so, with nephrotic syndrome, in your diet, since you know that they're losing proteins, what do you do with the protein in the diet? 
you increase it, right? So for this patient, you want to increase proteins. Because all that's happening in nephrotic syndrome, or the main thing that's happening is that they have proteinuria, they're losing the protein. Mm -hmm. But in glomerular nephritis, not only are they losing proteins, but they cannot get rid of your urea and your nitrogen. And your urea and your nitrogen is the waste that we create when we eat proteins in our diet. So again, they have protein urea, they're losing the proteins. You would think to do what with the protein? <laughs> to increase it, right? But you can't do that because this patient cannot get rid of the urea and the nitrogen, which is the waste product of protein breakdown and your GI tract when you consume it. So for this patient, we have to restrict protein because we understand that they can't utilize the protein because they're losing it, but right now we can't risk giving them more protein because of the waste that they cannot excrete, and that can lead to toxicity, and it can lead to uh, encephalopathy as well. Does that kind of make sense? So remember, glomerular nephritis is the bad one, that you have to restrict protein. Nephrotic syndrome is the physiology. It just forgets how to, uh, how to uh, um, allow stuff to go out and, and to stay in. And so that's why for this one, you increase protein. For this one, you decrease it. Make sense, guys? For these patients that have this upper respiratory infection with strep, it could also lead to rheumatic heart disease. Your valves of the heart may become damaged, and we'll get to that one in just a bit as well, okay? okay.